work presented today by Evi Stavro, who's a colleague of mine, is looking for new ways to prevent thrombosis without bleeding. You know, we're in this era today where we have this plethora of anticoagulants, both oral and parenteral, and most people and most clinicians is clearly a step forward. But the genesis for these ideas really took place in the back of the labs in the boardrooms of 1985 and 1990. And although there are improvements and the quality of care of our patients has improved inordinately, it's still not where we should be. In studies and in science, we know there's a lot of targets that can influence thrombosis independent of causing bleeding changes or changes in hemostasis. Hence, those of us who are interested in this field are working in those directions. So the work today outlines a unique target that could be ideal for this situation. It's a protein called Factor 12, which has befuddled the hemostasis community for decades because it influenced the superficial blood clotting tests that were recognized and developed 60 years ago, but it was not associated with bleeding. So the real question is, what does it do? So through the animal models, we attained and learned that this really influences your thrombosis risk. So the work that Dr. Stavaru developed and presented today is that by targeting factor 12, not only in the liver, which gets rid of the protein in the plasma, but her newly discovered presence of factor 12 in the leukocyte potentiates the ability to decrease one's risk for venous thrombosis. And in fact, she presented a new model, i.e. the initial event that leads to venous thrombosis is the migration, chemotaxis, and activation of neutrophils by factor 12 derived from the leukocyte that serves as a platform for factor 12 to lead to activation of the so-called classic coagulation cascade. So it is feasible to target the production of factor 12 both in the liver and in the bone marrow. And it would be an entirely different kind of approach, but it would be an appropriate way to give prolonged anticoagulation without risk of bleeding. Now clinically, this is inordinately important, not only for medical patients and patients who've had blood clots in their lungs and in their legs, but for the cancer patient who by the nature of their disease and also the therapies that we provide them increase their bleeding risk. So if we could protect them from thrombosis, which occurs in about 20 to 30% of these patients, then we can go a long way to improve not only the success of our therapies for the cancer, but ameliorate the complications that additionally leads to the shortening of their lives.